Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the Chaos Theory YouTube channel. Uh, you are joined, uh, Woody and myself are joined today by Barney and Josh, or Hans Wazeltov, of uh, Luo. Yeah. Hey Hello. guys. Easy now. And uh, so you guys have prepared a special stream, performance stream, of your album Unspoken, which came out in April. Mm -hmm. So um, that must have been quite interesting, uh, so, so far apart in different cities. So are we going to hear the whole album today? Uh, it's basically the whole album bar two tracks that like didn't really work in the way that uh, we were doing it. They just didn't like translate very well. Uh, and there's one in particular that basically just um, uh, we didn't have access to Barney's drums to record these. So they're a bit different to what we'd usually do live because we're both just doing keys and synths parts. And we're basically playing to um, the album drum recordings. Um, and there's like one track where if you take that out for Barney, there's like not really much left for him to do. <laughs> so like, yeah, there's, there's one that's kind of dropped for that reason. Um, but then, yeah, the, it's more or less the, the full album um, that we've done live separately in our own home setups. So like, I, 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 did like my room here. I did like the idea of doing that track though, because the track that we had to drop was basically, Josh basically chugs on one note on guitar throughout the whole track. So I love the idea of us, us filming, doing that, and I'm just sat there basically. There's no other part to play. And all Josh is doing is <laughs> that, would be one note. <laughs> that would be quite a funny performance video in itself, actually. But uh, no, well, actually thinking about setup and uh, lineup and how an arrangement, that's quite, uh, that's a question I've been wanting to ask for a while. I've been following Luo as a fan. I've been buying so many, I've got so many of your records and Man. Since I don't know, it feels like maybe maybe not as long as five years. It feels like that's a rough timeline of how long I've been into Luo and buying your music. I've seen awesome. you a few times in concert, and I've seen a few yeah. videos, and they're all and the setups have been very different. I was first introduced to Luo by uh, Will Gardner of Black Peaks, who was a right. singer yeah, of Black yeah. Peaks, and he yeah, was yeah. playing saxophone at the performance yeah. in Brighton, and I saw that's a video right. of that, yeah, yeah. and it was amazing. And I've also seen you perform with the brass band live. I've seen you perform in more rock setups. I've seen you two perform as the duo today uh, that we see today in Portal Festival last year. And so my question is: Is Luo a person? Is it a group of people? Is it a concept? Is it what? what? I've seen the solo production from you as well, Josh. So what yeah, is Luo? Yeah. Who are Luo? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so um, I don't know. It just kind of changes depending on what like. I don't know when i started it out it was just myself as like a solo producer um and it was just like i'd just do gigs with like a laptop and guitar um but that didn't really last like all that long i think i only really did like one or two shows like doing doing it that way and then um uh what happened i can't remember exactly i met um uh adam hutchison who's the bassist of physics um we were like working together in a shoe shop basically um, and then, like, wow. after we sort of like physics house band for anyone who isn't familiar with them, yeah, yeah, they're worth yeah. checking out. This is before they, I, this is before they'd formed physics, so they used that. Oh, I won't, really? I won't, I won't say the name of their old band because they might hate me if people go and look it up. But yeah, um, they, uh, I met, I met him there, and then through him, I met like uh, Sam Morgan and um, the bassist and guitarist that, who were in Luo for a while, called uh, Jake and. Right. Um, okay. And yeah, they just kind of ended up joining us, like um, to sort of realise the laptop compositions in a live context, basically. Um, and then gradually, um, Sam Hughes, who was the drummer at that time, joined as well. And we just sort of became, um, at the core, it was like a four-piece for a while, I guess. Yeah. But it was um, only ever bringing in like other musicians for like live videos and special performances and stuff so it's not like um a collective in that regard i'd say and okay. like um at a certain point um this all happened like amicably but I, I can't really remember what happened i think that was just like a period where we just like didn't really gig and then like a couple of the guys one of them uh, rick the bassist um moved to spain for like work related reasons and then like people just sort of like moved and just went on to do other things basically um and then around the same time that that was sort of happening um, was when I like started to collab with Barney. Um, and the start of this album was like originally not 
actually going to be done as Luo. It was going to be like a split EP between us and Barney's oh, right. project. Um, and then whilst that was sort of um, starting to take form, then like, uh, yeah, then basically there was just like, it just sort of fizzled out, I suppose. Like it was, there was nothing like, there was never like a conversation about it or whatever, but it's just sort of transitioned over time into different okay. things. And like um, now, like, I suppose the songwriting partnership is just like so strong that it's just like, basically you can just think of, of us as like a two piece nowadays. Cause that's basically like what wow. we're going to be, I think, but like, we will still like collab with people. I think we're looking to do that at the moment on like new music and stuff. But like, yeah. I would say at the core now, yeah, we're just like a, a duo basically. So yeah, it's sort of changed I mean, a bit my, in the three years, but yeah. Well, that's quite exciting. I think that might be part of the reason a lot of people have followed you. Cause for me, yeah. I find it really exciting when a musician or band or project I love keep I still don't know exactly what I'm going to get at each live show. I don't know what I'm going to get with each album. <laughs> it's really nice to know it's, there are some bands who've released an album like uh, this year, but I've been hearing that exact set for three years. So it's less of a, yeah, okay, but you're, thank you. It's great to have it on record, but I I feel like I've been hearing the same thing or the same set for three years. Whereas with Luo, yeah, sure. I'm never going to get that. I don't feel it's, yeah. it's evolving. So do you feel that the, um, the lineup changes have helped uh, your sound evolve organically with just a change of people and personnel around it or do you feel yeah. that it was a plan to, to evolve your sound uh there's always there's not you know. a plan to sort of evolve it's more i just get we just sort of get a bit bored doing the same thing over and over again and it's kind of like right um the, the palette of influences that we sort of draw from are like kind of broad and also restrictive but in the sense that they kind of all work quite nicely together and you can prioritize different so like on this album there's more of like a sort of metal tinge in some of it but i feel like we still don't mm. leave the kind of like electronic palette um you can just place more precedence on like metal for your theme for an album than you did on the last one and that kind of thing you know so it's just about like i think yeah we've got this sort of uh broad framework and we sort of like to explore different sides of it without like letting what we've done in the past completely like disappear or become like irrelevant but without just like repeating the same ideas so i don't know if any of that makes any sense or if barney's got anything to like weigh in about it uh well obviously i yeah like josh said it kind of we just started writing music and then it kind of evolved you know basically we just were chucking ideas at each other and then it became apparent that like you know obviously lua was doing less stuff and my project was doing less stuff so we just decided to make it lua so I guess in terms of the evolution, because like this record has been like a 50-50 split of like the songwriting, like throwing back ideas back oh, and forth. Okay. Between. Yeah, yeah. Because it's kind I've of more told. like that, I guess it's it's naturally going to be different to the older stuff, because like, I guess, um, I mean, Josh will have to say, but I guess the older stuff, he basically wrote it all. And then the other guys kind of just put their kind of spin on it, on their individual instruments. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this one was naturally going to be different just because the approach was different because we were both involved in the writing, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's, there's a clear, like, you know, um, lineage from the older Luro stuff to this. I mean, like when me and Josh met each other, it was like, it was like I'd met someone who has the same brain as me. Yeah. So it was like, <laughs> like nice. you know, like it was, it was weird how it, just naturally you know it sounds obviously luo but it's obviously progressed a lot at the same time so it's yeah just kind of naturally happened i guess didn't it so now i was going to ask was uh it for me it's, it sounds darker than than the last records <laughs> and i mean i wondered if that might be your influence barney and then on top of that how was it writing because you live brighton and bristol is that right that's it yeah 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 so how was it writing in like isolation effectively well it's it's funny because like i suppose all musicians because of lockdown have had to adapt to it but me and josh have been like writing like this for like the last two or three years yeah so <laughs> uh, it's just a perfect way for us to write really because um you know like because we are so um in terms of like the ideas it's 
we love throwing ideas back and forth to each other and it's just a lot easier for us to do it in a studio setting individually than it is in a room like some of it was written in the rehearsal room but for the most part um we are both comfortable doing it from from home so yeah that's kind of how it happened it being darker i don't know if that's necessarily just me josh is a pretty dark dark man but, uh, <laughs> but uh yeah it's just kind of how it evolved really yeah yeah, yeah. having Definitely said it's dark though, Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, 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 I was just going to say, say it's heavy and dungeon. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah. I saw you playing drums, Barney, it made a difference. It felt like Luo, but heavier, and I loved it. Yeah. 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 The, the first time I, I caught you guys was actually at Portals last year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I didn't really know much about you to begin with. And all I, I mean, the memory of the weekend is hazy fun. Uh, but uh, one thing that sticks out is is the bass that was coming out of the stage when you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's good to know. It's pretty well, yeah. bass. Nice one, thank you. Um, yeah, I think for it being darker, I mean, like, um, there was something about something, I think we wanted it to be sort of more, uh, the pace of the album definitely wanted it to be like faster, because I think the last, the f first album, Sleep Spindles, is more... Um, I don't know, I just kind of felt that it's like, I've listened to it back and like, I still like that record, but I'm like, why did I make all the intros like so long? It's like, there's like two minutes of ambience before all the beats kick in and that. And yeah, I just, I think with this album, we were like, kind of wanted it to be a bit more like immediate and um, yeah, more like, you, it sort of rushes you through it, I guess. <laughs> it's As someone like, who's frequently, frequently DJed with your music, I will appreciate that. Yeah, going forward. so there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Lots of like, oh no, yeah, there's two minutes of ambience. Oh, oh, got yeah, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, kind <laughs> yeah. of sh shorter, faster pieces, I guess, that have more energy in them. But um, like darker, um, yeah, I suppose it just sort of happened as not, like by nature of the fact that like when you can make it really heavy with live drums, maybe it just kind of accidentally ends up becoming a bit darker. But by the same token, we like it to be like sort of stupid. Um, I mean, there's a few things that we've put in the album to intentionally be sort of just like uh, irreverent and stupid because it's like, I don't know, kind of like the idea of things being so like almost like hilariously crushingly depressed, like, <laughs> you know, like where it's just so like, that you just sort of, yeah, it almost becomes hilariously heavy and dark. <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of, a, a double-edged thing going on there, I think. But yeah, um, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a bit. It's you a bit know, weird. we had another, we had another artist as a guest on the live stream music chat show we had uh, recently, Afexia from uh, Germany, who is an electronic musician but heavily influenced by new metal and stuff. And yeah, yeah, she was actually the first person to pipe up online when we announced it, saying, "Oh my God, you got Luo! I had no idea you oh, were right, into cool. them and stuff like that." So yeah, yeah so um, that was quite in interesting. Germany. So yeah, 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 in Germany. So um. Yeah, so, so obviously your your work is reaching out, and obviously there's some similarity in the backgrounds and approaches uh, mm -hmm. as you mentioned there. So I thought it was interesting, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, Woody. Do you? Um, I've got one more question, but I want to know if you've got any more, Woody. Uh, that, that kind of the the, one, the main ones I had, and obviously because only uh, catching you last year, the two piece was was the only real of experience that I had so it's it was quite interesting to go back to find out that it wasn't always like that and yeah that, the, you kind of asked that question already of how that progressed which is it's really great all right then so you've already recorded this album it was going to come out unspoken by the way everyone brilliant brilliant album and it was going it came out in mid-April we were discussing doing an album launch about it earlier this year and you were due to play at Portal Festival a couple of weeks ago so, um, or a few more, a few weeks ago, actually. So, um, so um, I guess since this is an album that's been already recorded and written in isolation from each other, not because of COVID reasons, but already, yeah. and it's been written and recorded and produced that way, what are we gonna see or hear that in this stream now that's different from hearing the album or seeing you in a gig? Uh, do you want to answer that, Barney? Or... Um, well, and you've got a lot more free limbs, don't you, to do other things? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, basically, it, for me, I really enjoyed doing it, although there was a few technical hitches. 
I really enjoyed doing it because obviously being the drummer um, live, I've got to cover all those parts. And obviously when there's when there's parts that isn't drums, like I get to play synths and stuff, but it was really enjoyable to be able to play everything I'd written for this live stream and not have to worry about the drums, you know? So I, yeah, I, was, able nice. to, I was able to play the keys parts and play the synth parts and kind of have fun with it. Um, so the difference, um, I guess, I just because just because of the nature of how we did it, it kind of sounds a little bit more live, apart from the drums, obviously, because the drums are exactly the same. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a little bit more stripped back as well, isn't it, Josh? Do you think? I mean, we do, we tend to in the in the studio recordings, we do a lot of layering and a lot of okay. Um, you know, even if it's the same part, a lot of doubling up on synths and a lot of layering. Yeah, yeah. Of, but a lot a lot of it was kind of stripped out for this live stream so most of what you hear apart from the drums is what we're playing live um so yeah it's a little bit more stripped back i guess in it than the live than the album yeah because well yeah obviously yeah like you're saying there's a lot of would you call them like reinforcement layers or something yeah that make it all just like i don't know there's just to fatten up the parts that are there but like yeah, when but you yeah. play them obviously it's kind of like you're playing with a cd in the background isn't it it's yeah. like it's going to sound fat because it's already fat so it's like taking that out and trying to get the sounds on their own to like still work basically yeah like we we go Quite pretty we go far in on overdubbing and all that kind of stuff yeah in the, the studio like stuff so yeah i guess it's just naturally going to feel a little bit more stripped back this live version because we just go so in on the studio <laughs> and that's like at an hour spent on like mixing everything that you yeah. can't just like replicate in a when you're playing it live yeah. on keyboard exactly. sort of thing so yeah yeah um so it might not sound as good but like it's uh it's coming it from our amazing. hands in, in real time so yeah that's the <laughs> that's the charm maybe. i received the video from you i was going to quickly check it for quality and then get back to what other work i was doing and instead i abandoned what i was doing and watched through the entire set twice because it was that <laughs> mesmerizing and engaging. Know, I, so, I, I, I was so blown away the you effort you made tell. i think was good we were watching it like is this just like really shit? and we were just like oh, we'll just, <laughs> just send it off anyway and it's like doesn't matter so <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well yeah i love it uh, i won't keep everyone <laughs> guessing anyway so for anyone cool, who's man. just uh, joined us or is watching this channel for the first time chaos theory music we have been organizing concerts for all types of musicians of all types of new bands since 2010 Obviously, during uh, coronavirus times and lockdown and isolation, we have decided to use our online network to do live streaming and streaming events and still bring great new music and art to people who want great new music and art out there. So um, our guests today are Luo. They uh, prepared a really special set for us and a performance uh, from across the country. And uh, if you want to find out more about their music, go to luo-music.co.uk. You can buy this album, Unspoken, on Bandcamp. Is it luamusic.bandcamp.com? That That's correct? the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there are links on the website anyway, luo-music, and the links will be in the description below as well. Uh, if you want to support what we do at Chaos Theory, you can donate to us on our Dice link in the description or on our Bandcamp. You can buy merch or just go to our website, follow the links below this. And during the, during the stream, you'll be able to chat with uh, Barney and uh, Josh and uh, us throughout uh, throughout the uh, stream and at the end we are going to attempt another live Q&A where you can ask them the questions and it'll either be here on YouTube or if we're having uh, if it's just too much for me to handle technically then you might just see us on Instagram TV so Instagram live so just follow Chaos Theory Music on Instagram and you will also maybe catch us there so um, thanks so much Josh Always. and Barney thanks, you know, thanks for all the effort and uh, yeah, and we're going to enjoy the show. So everyone, have a great time. Enjoy.